The Paranormal Police Department, New Cadet Guide. Written by and narrated by John P. Logston. Produced by Living Audio CIC. The following took place a few years from now. We know that's weird. Welcome to the Paranormal Police Department. PPD Archives Technician, number 13. All right, kid, come on in and have a seat. I'm Sergeant Zanin, but everybody calls me Sarge or Zan. Personally, I prefer Zan. I'm kind of informal that way. I've been going over your files, and it looks like you've been dealt a tough hand. I mean, spending your entire life topside with the normals with your particular skills? That had to be weird, at best. Not knowing your own kind? Well, that just sucks. But there's some major upsides, too. First off, you caught the eye of the brass because of how you put yourself on the line during that werewolf attack in your town. It took guts, kid, and it was noticed. The second plus in your favor is that you're starting out with a clean slate. You don't know shit. I know that sounds bad, but trust me when I tell you it's not. Learning things the right way the first time is always better. Oh, you'll still make your fair share of mistakes, everyone does. But walking in the door and getting set on the right path at the start is going to save you a lot of headaches. And the last thing you've got going for you is that you have no clue about what's really going on in the world you live in. That means you get to be walked through everything by the guy who has done it all, seen it all, and fought it all. That's yours truly. Now that's not me being arrogant either. There ain't a place in the netherworld or topside that I haven't been. As a quick aside, it should be noted that we capitalize Netherworld and the other places in our domain, but we do not capitalize Topside. Topside is only capitalized at the beginning of a sentence. Why? Because it's not important enough to those of us living in the Netherworld for it to receive such accolades. We do tend to capitalize Overworld, though. Don't ask me why, cadet. Let's just say we're an arrogant, inconsistent people and leave it at that. Moving on. I know you've been given some pamphlets and had a bit of an info dump from a few people. It's not like you'd be brought in completely cold, that'd be dumb. But there's a ton of shit they haven't told you. That's why I'm here. So sit tight and pay attention. I guarantee you're going to learn something new. Right. Let me flick off the lights and pull up a visual on the basic layout of the land. There are two major sections of the world we live in. The land of the supernaturals is known as the netherworld. This is the section we're down in now. And then there's what you call Earth, which is also the overworld or topside. We'll get into that in a bit. The Netherworld has all your standard supernatural races, including vampires, werewolves, hellwolves, pixies, fae, werebears, goblins, demons, dragons, hellions, mages, wizards. Put your hand down, kid. I already know what you're going to ask. Why am I including mages and wizards when talking about race? because each of them is their own race. That goes for witches too, by the way. Some people find that odd, but being that I'm a mage myself, I take offense at that. You haven't seen me running around pointing at werewolves while claiming they're odd, have you? I assure you that I don't. Back to the map. You'll notice there's a thick line running down the middle here. That's the wall that separates Netherworld proper from the Badlands. It's known as the Netherworld Wall. It was set up after one of the most brutal wars in the history of the Netherworld, a war that happened over a disagreement regarding the normals. I'll explain, but you gotta focus here, kid. There's a lot of info I'm about to dump on you. Also, keep in mind that all the garbage you've been fed by the normals is either wrong or confused. What I'm about to tell you is the real story. A couple thousand years ago, all the different races in the Netherworld lived together. They warred constantly, since there are pretty major divisions in how each race thinks things should be done, but there was no dividing wall back then. Everything was as stable as it could be. Then, a group of wizards started playing around with strange magic. They ended up learning we were able to jump through a dimensional rift that connected us to the world you grew up in. And most of us call your Earth Topside though some of us do refer to it as the overworld. Anyway, after we discovered Topside, we found a bunch of humanoids living there. We call them normals these days. They were tasty to the likes of vampires, werewolves, dragons. Well, you get the idea. 
It was like the races of the netherworld ended up with a brand new buffet, and the price was right. I see you wincing, kid, and I can't say I blame you, but hey, I'm a mage, so drinking blood isn't really my thing. For a long time, many races from the netherworld terrorized the normals' topside, feeding on them, controlling them, enslaving them, and so on. A bunch of supers weren't that fond of it, though, and they did their best to protect and educate the normals. These particular supers saw a lot of potential in normals, beyond them being merely cattle. I was one of the supers who stood up for the normals. Yes, I'm that old. Well, eventually, the shit hit the fan and war broke out. One side wanted to continue feeding on the normals, the other side determined that needed to stop. There were also a bunch in the middle who enjoyed feasting, but who also recognized that normals could be more valuable than a simple food source. You'll be surprised to know that those who ultimately sacrificed blood were the vampires. Werewolves and werebears did as well, but for vampires to give up blood only proved that they were more about money, power, and prestige than they were about only feeding their animalistic needs. Clear lines began to form as battles waged. The dragons, hellions, and the denizens of hell teamed up to fight pretty much everyone else. Had the vampires and werewolves joined their cause, we would have lost. In other words, you and I wouldn't be sitting here. Ultimately, that was the impetus for building a wall that separated those who wanted to keep to the old ways and those who shared a more progressive outlook. It was also the primary reason the Paranormal Police Department was formed. Our job is to keep the peace, in both the netherworld and topside. We only arrest supers, of course, but we are everywhere. As a quick aside, normals generally don't know we exist. That's on purpose. However, there are certain professions held by normals that make it necessary for them to know about us. Hotel workers, normal cops, and so on. Also, a lot of supers own big corporations topside. The general rule is that if there is a CEO of a big corporation who happens to be a huge asshole, it's probably not a super. I bet you thought I was going to say the opposite. I'm just tugging your chain, kid. Seriously, though, we do our best to keep normals from knowing about us. You can work with them, talk with them, date them, and so on, and that's totally cool. But the only time we fully let them know the real deal is if there's no other choice. Some cities even have a public relations firm, known as The Spin, to help cover up situations that are difficult to explain to normals. You might be wondering what happens if the normals happen to catch sight of something they shouldn't see. Well, there's a division of the PPD known as the cleaners for that. They clean up areas, reset memories, and so on. Don't bother trying to talk to them, though. They're a tight-lipped bunch. All right, back to the map. If you'll look over here, you'll see that there are three main controlling parties in the Badlands. The dragons are farthest west. They stick to themselves mostly, but they are always on the lookout to start trouble. Don't ever underestimate them. They're a dubious bunch. On the east side, right next to the Netherworld Wall, sit the Hellions. In case you weren't informed, a Hellion is a mixture of dragon and demon blood. Yeah, I can tell from that look on your face that you get exactly what I'm saying. And you're absolutely correct to look that way. Hellions are stereotypically crafty, cunning, ruthless, and they can fight like nobody's business. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find their match anywhere in the world. Their biggest downfall is ego, though. Sitting between the dragons and the Hellions is a place called The Strip. It's loaded with hotels and casinos. You know Las Vegas? Well, it looks almost exactly like that. In fact, your Vegas was modeled after The Strip in the Badlands. It was even designed by the same people. Small world, right? On the northern part of the Badlands, closer to the Hellions, sits Hell. No, it ain't the Hell you've read in your religious books. Ah, eh, strike that. I suppose it actually is that Hell, but it's not what they thought it was. Actually, I'd say that Dante's Divine Comedy was the closest of all the topside attempts at describing it. There are nine levels, each containing a different race. Some of those races, such as the Slugs, preferred the progressive stance on things back in the Old War, but since they weren't very mobile, they had to fight for their fellow denizens. Shit happens, as they say. 
Now, on our side of the wall, we have a nice city center. It acts as kind of a melting pot of all races living in Netherworld proper. Everyone living there gets along pretty well. There are skirmishes now and then, and we do have people from the main compound stirring up shit on a regular basis, but for the most part, it's peaceful. Move to the outer edges, though, and you're going to have trouble. Each of these locations I'm pointing at are sequestered parcels of land that belong to the individual race named above my pointer. These parcels of property are clearly defined, separated by wards, fences, and common land, and they keep to themselves. Well, they're supposed to anyway. It doesn't always work out. When you're walking the beat and you have to go into one of those areas, make damn sure you have your badge with you. If you don't properly identify yourself and they catch you, it may well spell your doom and there won't be a damn thing the PPD can do about it, legally anyway. Even if we could, you'd be too dead to know about it. Now, each of these compounds are sovereign. They do have to submit to the law just like everyone else, but only if the law has the right to be on their property. That usually requires a warrant, unless it's an emergency situation. Sometimes we bypass the rules, of course. Again, though, risky. I sure hope you're following all this because I hate having to repeat myself. Since you're nodding, I'd say you've got the gist of the layout down. You already know about topside, obviously, so there's no point in me getting into all that. Right. I think we're done with the geography lesson, so let's head down to the basement and get your paranormal police department tattoo. Note that I'm only saying paranormal police department to drill that into your head. We're not the police department. Don't ever say that, because it's wrong. A police department is run by normals. Like I said before, we work with them and they know about us, but they ain't us. We are way different. They use lowercase letters when they spell police department, for example. Also, the only time you have to use the full paranormal police department name is when you're reading off someone their rights or if you're identifying yourself for the first time. Otherwise, just call it the PPD. It's easier and everybody knows what you're talking about. Heads up on something else. Once these elevator doors open, we're going to be in the most advanced technological room anywhere. It's run by a goblin. His name is Pecker. It ain't that funny, kid. He's also got a turtle who acts as his assistant, but I have the feeling she knows a lot more than he does about stuff. Her name is Agnes. Okay, here we go. Hey, Pecker. Got a new recruit here. Needs a standard issue PPD tattoo. Nothing fancy. Oh, kid, I should warn you about a couple things regarding that tattoo. First is that it's gonna sting like a bitch. Used to be worse before Pecker here came up with a better way to handle it, but it still sucks. Just slide your arm in there and try to relax. It's best not to watch. Second is that you're going to get a bunch of nanites injected into you. Those are like super tiny robots who run through your body and hook the new tattoo to other things, primary of which happens to be what we call a connector. That's a device that gets hooked into your brain in some way that's beyond my pay grade, but it'll allow you to communicate mentally with anyone in the PPD, regardless of where they are, assuming they're not blocked or dead, of course. Before you ask, yes, you can also do conference calls and such. Another thing about the tattoo is that it can be used to send perpetrators straight to lockup, assuming you've knocked them out or have them otherwise subdued. Just hit the right combo on your tattoo, and they'll fade away from where you're at and appear in a holding cell in the netherworld. One of the biggest benefits, though, is that you'll get supercharged. That means increased speed, strength, and agility, plus whatever your normal race is, gets bonus points. For example, I'm a mage, so that means that my magical power and stamina was immediately increased when I got my tat. It's not like incredibly higher, but it gave me the edge in a fight more than once over my years. Cherish that, cadet, but don't abuse it. As you grow in rank, your tattoo's capabilities will grow with you. All right, well, I think that's about all you need to know on that. What's that, Pecker? Oh, right. Uh, all right, kid, there is one more thing you should be aware of regarding the tattoo. Well, technically it's the bonus points you get, but the tattoo is the impetus. Back in the day, cadets got their tattoos and later got an increase in strength, magic, or whatever. But these days, it all happens at the same time. Anyway, I'm not sure how to put this delicately, so I'm just going to come out and say it. It's going to make you horny. 
I know, I know, it sounds weird, but that's the deal. For every particular skill or asset you've got, you're also going to get one horny point. Now, one horny point may not sound like much, but you'd be surprised. Think about what happens when a cat is in heat. One horny point is about half that level of sexual desire. Not so bad, unless you're already at about one half that level of sexual desire by default. If so, that's gonna stick you at the full horniness level of a cat in heat. Disturbing, right? Well, that's the way it goes, though. Some cops have multiple races in their DNA, so they end up having multiple horny points. As an example, the chief of the Las Vegas Paranormal Police Department, a guy named Ian Dex, has DNA markers from every supernatural race we know of, including a few that no longer exist. That means he's got well over 10 horniness points. It's amazing the guy can even function, but somehow he manages. Rumor has it that he can talk to his own dick, too. Worse, it talks back. Don't give me that look, kid. I'm just the messenger here. Ah, I've seen that wince before. Getting that tattoo stings, doesn't it? Getting upgrades ain't much better, but the pain will fade fast. Thanks, Pecker. Right, now that we got that done, let's head over to the archives because you've got a fair amount of reading to do in order to catch up on everything. Wait just a sec. You see that guy over there with a the top hat and glowing eyes? He's a reaper. Yeah, that kind of reaper. Funny thing is, is his name is also Reaper. Not super creative, but he's a damn good cop. Actually, he's more than a cop. He's what we call a retriever. Think of him like a bounty hunter, bringing back supers who overstay their welcome topside or who try to escape topside. It's best if he brings people back alive because he gets a higher commission but it usually doesn't pan out that way. Most people who want to get topside without authorization aren't commonly interested in coming back, if you know what I mean. Fortunately, it's a more common situation that a super has all the proper authorizations and documentation, but they don't want to go through the mandatory reintegration process. It's kind of a pain. You have to sit through a bunch of tests and manipulations until the system confirms that you won't engage in any natural instincts that could bring harm to normals topside. Think of a vampire running around biting necks, for example. We wouldn't want that. But as a person nears their reintegration date, they have to be really on top of their emotions and get back on time. If they fail to do so, they'll be warned. If it gets to three warnings, the retrievers are going to come knocking at your door, and that means deep reintegration and possibly having your travel credentials revoked. Some people even get jail time. The worst of that is the deep reintegration, though. Don't even ask, kid. It's just too disturbing to imagine. Okay, the room on your right has all the case files for everything that goes down in the PPD. I'm not going to tell you that it covers every detail, that it'd be impossible, but there are plenty of data points you should study up on in order to get the basics on things. You'll need it, so don't shirk on your reading. There are only a few major precincts you have to read about. They are Las Vegas, Netherworld, Southeast Asia, Seattle, Shadow, New York, and the Badlands. You know, there's also a top secret section regarding a division known as Black Ops, aka Sinister. Nobody is supposed to know about it, but you seem like the kind of cadet who is going somewhere, so I'll make sure you get access. Since you've had old Zan here giving you the basics on everything, doesn't matter which precinct you start with, but I will say that most people go with Las Vegas and then Netherworld. Those two tend to provide a lot of deeper insights to the overviews I've given. All right, cadet, I think that's about all I've got for you today. Dig your nose into those case files, and in about a week, you'll be ready to meet your first partner. It'll be a veteran on the force, so you don't have to worry about screwing up too much. Now I've got to go repeat myself to some other sucker. I mean, um, officer. Best of luck, kid. <laughs> You're gonna need it. You have been listening to the Paranormal Police Department New Cadet Guide. To access all of the case files on the Paranormal Police Department, go to ppdbooks.com. This guide was written by, narrated by, and is copyright 2019 by John P. Logston. It was produced by Living Audio CIC.